Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafke, and I'm continuing this series, Master Databricks and Apache Spark, open source. Databricks is a user interface wrapper around Spark that adds a bunch of other services, but the main goal of Databricks is really to get you up and running and productive with Apache Spark as soon as possible, and it's completely cloud-based, whereas Apache Spark is really designed to run on-premises, but of course it can be run in the cloud. When you see under the title, uh, the little bricks. That means that this is Databricks specific content. When you see the Apache Spark symbol, it means that I'm going to be demonstrating it on open source Apache Spark. In this particular case, and in most cases, there's very little difference. The coding, syntax, and all the concepts apply equally to both, but because you're using different platforms for each, you're going to have some nuances. So in this case, as I mentioned, I'm going to be focusing on demonstrating this in Databricks. We're going to be talking about structured query language using set operators. Let's jump in. So when you think about SQL in general, structured query language, you may or may not be aware that the entire architecture of structured query language is built upon the concept of set theory. And you may have wondered back when you were in whatever grade you learned set theory, those Venn diagrams with the circles and intersections and all that stuff. As I did, when am I going to use this? Why do I care? Can I get out of here soon? Unfortunately, I didn't know they would come back to haunt me. Yeah, set theory. So in fact, SQL is built all around set theory and knowing Venn diagrams is really crucial to being good with SQL. In fact, I don't do it as much anymore, but I used to go back whenever I had new queries that the business would give me and it seemed kind of complicated. I would draw Venn diagrams to say, okay, here's my population. I want to know this subset of the population and I want this intersection between that population and this. So it actually comes back and that is really useful if you're learning to use SQL. So in set theories we're looking at processing the results of two different queries. We've got one list and we have a second list and they have the same data types and columns but we want to do something like merge them in some way. The first operator for instance is the union operator. Let's step back and think, why might, might we use this? Well, imagine as we're showing in this example, we've got a company that has, you know, an online sort of a web app where you can order products, okay, so they're internet sales, but they also have box stores, you know, they're brick and mortar stores where they sell their products. And as is not unusual, this particular company has some products they sell in both environments, but other products which are unique to either being only in the retail stores or only available online. So in the first situation, what our goal is, we want to get all products that are online and or in the retail stores, but we don't want to get the, it duplicated if it's in both, right? We don't want to get, you know, uh, bicycle tires in both. If it's just bicycle tires, then listing it once should be enough. So we're going to get a consolidated list of products. And that's the idea here in the union. Notice we can see, and the green, by the way, in all these diagrams I'm going to demonstrate, green indicates this is what we're going to return. So if we say union, we're going to get all online products, and that's what's shown in that circle, and all retail products, but not the ones that we've already pulled out of online products. And that's why the retail product circle does not come back and overlap with online products. So it's demonstrating that we're only going to get a distinct list. Union and union distinct actually do the same thing. So I'm just showing you union here. The other thing you could say, though, is union all. What's the difference, Brian? What's the difference between union all and union? Well, what the difference is, is when you get that intersecting point where the product occurs, you know, bicycle tires 101 is also bicycle tires 101 in retail, you're going to show them both. Not really sure. Those are That seems like a less common use case. I think the first one makes more sense to me in most cases, but there may be times when you want to show it twice, in which case you can't union all. Now intersect, notice the green here because that's the key to all of these. The green where it says both, it's the intersection. So when it is in both sets, the intersect says just give me those things which are in both. Now this is different from joins because joins you're going to be joining one row to another row, one row on this table to one row on that table. But this is more like stacking them. I've got a list of products I've got from online products and now I have a list of products I've got from retail products. With the union, it's going to consolidate that list. So they're separate rows. They're not cross, we're not joining rows. We're just stacking them. In the intersect, it's going to say, take that list from online products, 
compare it to the list of retail products and give me back only those which are in both. Okay, so that's intersect. And you could say intersect all, which means if it's in both, show me a duplication. But if you say intersect, it's not going to by default duplicate. Now, except is a little different. We can see in this diagram, again, focus on the green. We have online products, we have retail products. So in the first query, we ask for online products. But then we say, only show us online products and exclude not only retail products, but any of the retail products which are also in our online products. So we're only going to show online products which are exclusively online products. That's the idea of using the accept clause. So in this notebook, this is a Databricks notebook, I'll put a comment in the descriptions which shows you where to get this notebook. There's really no slides here, so notebook, I guess I can put the one slide out there because it is pretty riveting. Uh, but it uh, shows you how to use these different set operators. So we're going to talk about union, union all, union distinct, intersect, and accept, and some databases don't call it accept, they call it minus. I'm not going to demonstrate minus, but anywhere you see the accept in Spark, you can also substitute minus, and in some relational databases, they also support minus. First thing I'm going to do, another thing I'll put in the description, is that if you haven't followed my other videos, there's one video where I give you all of these CSV files and then explain to you how to take those, bring them into Databricks, and create Spark tables on top of them using a sort of hive definition so that you can query them as tables. So I'll put that in the description because you're going to need that if you want to walk through and execute this code. But if you just want to hang out and watch how it works for me, I do that too. To be honest, I'm not always interested in running code because if I can see how it works, that's good enough. I can get the gist. So either way, fine with me. So first, we had created in that prior video a database called AW Project. And I want to switch to that database so that all of my table statements, etc., when I refer to tables, it's already in the proper database and it's not saying I don't see where that table is. Otherwise, I'd have to give it like a database prefix and things like that. It gets a little bit problemsome. So a database is just a namespace. It's a place where I can say, okay, it's like a folder and now I can work there. And I can do show tables to say, okay, make sure I've got my tables. There they are. We created quite a few tables in that video. What I want to do is create a sort of good test data set that we can work with because I want to create something that's a semi-usable example or something that makes sense. The Databricks documentation doesn't make any sense, to be honest to hear. It uses numbers and it doesn't even give you the table that the numbers are in. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to give you actual uh, examples using DIM product. I'm going to create a subset of data and it's going to be looking at um, a product example. I'm not going to do the full catalog thing I used in the Venn diagrams, but I'm going to create two product lists, which could just as well be, you know, internet sales and retail sales. The first one, I'm going to create a table product list one. Now, I made this rerunnable because I've been testing it. I'm going to say drop table if it exists, product list one, and then create table here using the select query. And I'm going to be very specific. I only want a few rows so that it's easy to follow. So let me run this. I'm just joining DIM product to product subcategory here. So I can get the product key, the name as product, product name, and then I'm going to be getting the English subcategory name as subcategory. So I'm just going to run that. And I wanted to point something out. When we create a table like this, by default, it's going to con convert it to a format or store it as a format called Parquet. Parquet is very efficient. It's a column still format. It's compressed. So it's great. It's automatically going to do that for us. So this is, unlike the CSV files where we kind of create a definition on top, but we don't duplicate the data. Here we're actually extracting and storing into a parquet format uh, data store. I'm going to do the same thing here, exact same columns. Everything's the same except we're going to pull off a different set of keys so we can get a good sort of cross set of examples. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to show you, I'm going to join these two tables so I can show you where they intersect, like where they match, where they don't. So we get an idea what to expect when we use the following queries. So we can see here is the first one, product key 210, HL, road frame, black 58, road frame, subcategory, right? That exists in both data sets. We can see because I've joined it across up here, it exists in both. 211 is only in the first query. It's in product list one. 212 is also only in product list one. Uh, 215 is in both. And 222 and 224 are only in product list two. So we've got a good mix here to kind of see how this works. So let's start with union, union distinct, union all, all that good stuff. We're going to just take product list one and do a union with product list two and see what happens. 
what we got is a consolidated list of both. You remember we had 210 product key and 215 were in both. But we don't see them twice. Why? The, it does a deduping process. So even though it's in both lists, and the really the best way to conceive of this is imagine you sort of put one list aside and then you, the second query, the select from product list two, is stacking it with that. And then it's going to do something with the, the merge set in some way. In this case, we want a, a union list of the two, but if the code like 210 and 215 are there twice, it dedupes it or it does a distinct over it. So the, the exact same behavior can be found if we issued union distinct. And I would recommend adding the distinct option to it because it's clearer to people. Nobody's questioning. People don't have to go back and research their manual. Kudos to you. You know the default, but actually being explicit is better than implicit. So it's better to, I think, put it there. And we can see we have the same result. It's distinct. We don't get duplicates. And I think in most cases that makes more sense to me. But of course, there'll be times when you say, I need it for some particular use case. If you do, you can just add union all. Union all does the exact same thing, but it doesn't remove duplicates. So we can see here we have 210 twice. We have 215 twice because it was in both data sets. Okay, what about intersect? All right, intersect, before I, I generate inter, uh, demonstrate intersect, I'm going to do a little cross join again. I'm going to show you what the data looks like. Well, when, when we're dealing with intersect, we're really focusing on what is in both data sets. So we can see 210. 215 is in both data sets. That's the focal point of the intersect. It's the intersection, right, of the two. So let's run just a very simple version of intersect from product list one, intersect product list two. And not surprisingly, we get the two product codes. It deduped automatically. We didn't ask it to. There are situations where if you have duplicates on the product list one, you can, you'll see duplicates on uh, probably duplicates, and I'll show you that, but basically it automatically is deduping here. It's not going to show them both. It's the same as using interse intersect distinct. If we say intersect all, uh, the idea there is to show dupes. Notice we don't see any dupes. Um, that's because by definition, obviously, an intersect is a, d a combination of two. It's not going to show them twice. However, I did want to show you an example where if you had actual dupes on your input, here we can see 3.3 three and 4.4, four, we will actually see dupes here. And we'll see 3.3. Three, three. Why? Because 3.3 three, three is here and 3.3 three, three is here. So it's like it's duplicated in both the first data set and the second, so it shows the dupes when we say intersect all. But it's a little different than the union all where we just automatically get it. So I just wanted to highlight that. Now what if we comment this out and we change it a little bit we're going to say select from values 2, 3, 5, 6. Now notice 3 is here twice. So you might think, well, 3 is in the input data set twice. It should list twice in your output. But it doesn't. It's not showing it duplicated. So be aware of that difference and make sure you account in your code for that and what your expectations are. And by the way, if you ever need sort of a table on the fly, in Spark SQL you can do this, which is kind of cool. Just provide a list of values and you have sort of an in-place table. Again, let's. Uh, we're going to do the accept clause now. Let's show you what the data looks like. The accept clause is saying, I've got my first data set, right? my first query results. And in the accept, I want to show things that are not in the other result set. So let's take a look at what that does. I'm going to say product list 1 except product list 2. And what we see is 211 and 212, right? Those are the codes. Let's go back up here for a minute. We see 211, right, and 212. That makes perfect sense. Something to be aware of is what happened to 222 and 224? Well, the accept is driving off of the first query. It's not really worried about the second query and extras that it may have. It's saying, what do I have in the first query? The 211 and 212 are only there. And the fact that 222 and 224 are only in the right side doesn't mean anything in that second query, I should say. And I can do the same thing distinct. And again, you get 212 and 211. What if I say all? No difference. But I do want to highlight also the all clause. What if we run this query? Notice now we get duplicates. Like before, only it's slightly different here, we have duplicates. We don't have them on the other side because we don't want to show anything that's in the second data set, right? So here we're just saying, show me what's here. And if I do have dupes with the all, it will show them. So three, so I've got uh, four, four here, four, four, and nine, nine, and it shows up. We saw using Spark and the set operations, I walked you through a Venn diagram, 
and I mentioned to you that you should really think of anything with structured query language statements in terms of Venn diagrams and set theory. Uh, that's how it was originally built and designed. That's the concept upon which SQL rests. I also walked you through a demonstration of using, let's see, there was the union, the intersect, and the accept. And the idea there is union is kind of concatenating to result set. The intersect is looking at the intersection of the two queries. And accept is saying, look at the first query and show me things that are not in the second query or second result set. So those are kind of the ideas going on there. So it's pretty cool and it is useful, but not in everyday queries really. This gets into so the use case, and I'll put another link in the description, which is my riveting video on dimensional modeling for data warehousing because that's where this really may come in handy. When you need to create what's called a conformed dimension, the idea is you've got a dimension that cannot be sourced from only one place with a nice clean set of values. So I hope this was useful. Please put comments in the bottom. I read them, I respond. I hope you liked it. Tell me what you liked. Um, yeah, it's good to hear all that stuff. Please share, subscribe, all those things. Let people know about my channel. I hope it's helping people. Until next time, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Thank you.